Welcome to Brampton Focus. In Ontario, the political landscape has been red since 2003. That's liberal. The last progressive conservative leader in Ontario, Ernie Eves. My name is Michael A. Charbonne. Next, we meet Mr. Patrick Brown, leader of the Progressive Conservative Party and the official opposition, right here on Brampton Focus. Brampton Focus. My next guest was uh, educated in the University of Windsor, Ontario. He has a law degree. He had three terms as a city councillor in Barrie. He was a member of the, uh, pro not provincial parliament, the uh, federal parliament, M minister of parliament, for three sessions from 2006 to 2015. And in actual fact, he sat across from Justin Trudeau. Um, he's characterized himself as a pragmatic conservative. And on September 14th, 2015, he became the MPP of Simcoe North. He is the leader of the official opposition, and he is the leader of the Progressive Conservative Party. Please welcome Patrick Brown to Brampton Focus. Great to be on Brampton Focus. Thank you very much for being here. Um, the province, there was a province-wide survey that was done by Forum Research, uh, which continues to, to paint a terrible picture of the Kathleen Wynne government, um, with the latest results indicating that she maintains the confidence of just about one-fifth of voters in the province. The survey, which was conducted April 23rd, uh, reveals that 39% of Ontarians would vote for the Progressive Conservatives if an election was held today, while 34% would vote for the Liberals. Mr. Brown, as, uh, as the newly minted leader, as one would say, uh, what does this survey suggest to you uh, as far as the appetite of Ontarians is concerned from a political well, standpoint? Well, you know, I think it's consistent with, with what we've been seeing for the last year. You know, for 12 opinion polls in a row, we've seen the PC party leading substantially over the Liberals. Uh, there is a desire for change. Kathleen Wynne has disappointed a lot of Ontario families. Uh, the mismanagement, the scandal, the waste. Um, I think we're seeing that reflected not only in the polls, but in the by-elections. You know, the last two by-elections we've had, the PCs have won by margins that are almost the biggest in 25 years. Uh, and, you know, we're not taking anything for granted. Uh, we're working hard, but, you know, certainly the poll, the polling is encouraging. Ernie Eves was the last Conservative Premier in the 1999 election. So for 13 years, which is uh, the past four sessions, uh, we've had the uh, McGuinty government, 2003, 2007, 2011, and win in 2014. So the Liberals have had a stranglehold. The Conservatives have not had a very good record in trying to engage the Ontario uh, populace to vote for them. What are you going to do that's going to change that? Well, one of the reasons I, I left um, uh, the federal politics, I was so frustrated with how the provincial party had been run, the opportunities that were squandered, and the fact that Ontario was in desperate need of change. Uh, I'm going to focus on building the PC party to be a modern, inclusive, pragmatic party that is a reflection of the province, uh, um, a reflection of that beautiful mosaic. And I can tell you what I've been focusing on is uh, fiscal responsibility, tra transparency, uh, building our infrastructure to get product to marketplace, cutting red tape, having affordable energy prices, and really fixing the education system so that it, it gears young people towards the jobs of today, not yesterday. And you know, we're certainly seeing a lot of people interested in that message and in that path that Ontario must go. In uh, 2014, I had uh, the opportunity to speak in depth to uh, Tim Hudak, a uh, very engaging gentleman. I, I appreciated uh, his point of view. Unfortunately, uh, with the announcement that he made of saying that he wanted to eliminate 100,000 public service jobs, you basically awoke the, the elephant in the room. I mean, um, he had the election to lose. The, the Liberals had the gas plant scandal. Everybody said, finally, we're going to get some change. And it didn't happen. Uh, and I quote you here with regards to that. You said, never again will our candidates and volunteers have to defend faith-based funding or 100,000 job cuts at the front doors of Ontario voters. That's still something that resonates with a lot of voters out there. How do you change that perspective? Well, you know, it was one of the reasons I ran for the leadership. I was so frustrated how the party had um, managed to 
grab defeat in the jaws of victory. Um, and frankly, I didn't recognize the, the PC party. Um, I view the public sector as a partner, not an adversary. Um, and frankly, if you look at the party's roots, you know, the great Bill Davis, who I am a huge admirer of, um, wrote some of the most progressive labor legislation in our province's history. And he always worked uh, in a very collegial manner with the public sector. And so the, um, the approach that was articulated uh, before that was very adversarial to, to Labour is not one that I was comfortable with and obviously this is a new day for the PC party uh, and, and certainly we're more in sync uh, today with uh, uh, the wise uh, Bill Davis. The wise Bill Davis, actually a resident of Brampton. Um, when you look at the sunshine list and we get to see that ever so often and we see some of the uh, the pay levels that some uh, people are getting, I mean uh, it becomes a, a little shocking. Is there a is there a plan, or is there something in your mind from the the Progressive Conservative Party with regards to that sunshine list and and having a look at how much is too much to pay someone from the public coffers? Well, you know, I I think the the growth in the sunshine list highlights the growth we've seen in administration with Kathleen Wynne and Dalton McGuinty. Um, you know, you've seen bureaucracy grow. You look in healthcare at the Lins, um, just huge new healthcare bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. um, and in home care, we now spend 39% of home care dollars on administration, uh, not patients. And so what I love to see is a shift away from those uh, extravagant sunshine lists and investments in administration. I want to see it focused on patients. I want to see it focused on the front lines, whether it's in the front lines of education, the front lines of health care. Those dollars need to go directly towards the people that need the help. The unfortunate circumstances, people will say market value sometimes determines certain amounts of those, uh, those pay scales. But uh, market value is one thing. A, a government job is a, a very opportunistic point of view. With about a minute left, how can we make some uh, level changes? Is there something that one could say that there, there's got to be a ceiling? Because, I mean, we always say that we want to move the money, but it never really happens. We haven't seen that. You know, you, you, you can't legislate common sense, but yeah. I, th I think the notion that you be frugal with taxpayer dollars, like it, like it is, is, is you're caring for your mother's, um, you know, pension or retirement savings. You know, I think that same care needs to apply with government resources. And, you know, I, 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 I love the government resources. When we come back, okay. I'm going yeah. to talk a little yeah. bit about that. We're going to talk about the debt uh, because that's something that is in the forefront of many Ontarians. And uh, I think that's something. Uh, we're speaking to Mr. Patrick Brown, leader of the Progressive Conservatives. You're watching Brampton Focus. My name is Michael A. Charbon. We'll be back with lots more right after this. back to Brampton Focus. I'll read you a quote. It says, this is a new party. These are new times. We are making it clear that the direction we're taking out there is one that the people are going to stand up and take notice to. That was said by Mr. Patrick Bram, who was leader of the Progressive Conservatives and the official leader of the opposition here with us in Brampton Focus. Um, when we left for our commercial break, uh, we talked about budgets. And you know, the province now carries a staggering $3.8 billion dollar budget. I mean, it's it's inconceivable. 308, 308 billion dollars. That's a, that, that has been called one of the largest debts of a non-sovereign country. And uh, you had a quote that said Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals have made their choice. One billion a month that's not going to schools, hospitals, and the vulnerable people who need a hand up. Um, how do you react to this? I mean, for goodness sakes, if you have the opportunity to become the premier, um, it's going to take more than one three or four year session for you to take care of this. $308 billion. When is someone going to ring that bell? You know, it's going to be a huge mess to, to clean up. And I, I'm aware of that. We're up for the challenge. Um, but what we've seen is after Dalton McGinty and Kathleen Wynne, the same old liberal approach for years and years, it's a billion dollars a month in interest payments. Yeah. The, not one of the most, the most indebted subnational government in the world. And I think what 
it really is is a frivolous attitude with taxpayer dollars and you know I'll give you a few examples the two billion dollars spent on the Pan Am games if you look at what they're paying the executives it was exorbitant it was appalling the new Hydro One CEO the first thing they do with the new Hydro One CEO is giving the new CEO a four million dollar paycheck and I challenged Kathleen when in the legislature I said give me some example yeah, what market rate what what market rate is appropriate? Yeah. I said, give me one example in Canada. Yeah. She got up and says, that's what they play in corporate America. And I said, give me a Canadian example. And the only example they can give is in Quebec, the Hydro CEO gets 400000 Give me a break. We're paying 10 times the amount of what they're paying. It's just, it, it, it makes your stomach sick. They are so careless yeah. and so frivolous with taxpayer dollars. I mean, it, and now, and now here we are. Um, it, it upsets me when we're selling off portions of Hydro One. Um, I do have to say, though, in, in defense of the Liberals, I mean, uh, they're, your former Conservatives uh, government also contributed to the debt. So it's not solely responsible for $308 billion. This has been something that's been moving along. So, I mean, you can talk about Harris, you can talk about Eves, you can talk about all those others as well. So uh, we can't say it's all on the Liberals, but this is what we're left with now. What would you do differently? And, and please don't tell me you're going to sell off the LCBO and the OLG and Hydro One because those are investments that we need for our kids. And, and yeah. well, how would you, you know, if you had the reins, a deal with $308 billion, Patrick? Well, certainly I, I wouldn't do the sell off of Hydro One. You know, that, that, that is so foolish. We lose $700 million in revenue. It's it's all temporary money to look their, make their books look better for the next two years, yeah. but hurts our long-term position. What I think it needs to get back to is the basics. You support small businesses. You graduate young people for the jobs we need. You know, the Conference Board of Canada says that we lose $3 billion a year in revenue from jobs that are available in Ontario that we don't fill. Mm. We're graduating people in the wrong positions. We graduated 9,000 teachers for 5,000 teaching positions, yet in the skilled trades there's huge shortages. In Kitchener-Waterloo, the tech companies are hiring people from California because we don't graduate the young people with the programming we need in Canada. And so, you know, we need a complete shift in our economic development strategy. Kathleen Wynne and Dalton McGinty have lost 350,000 manufacturing jobs. Their approach hasn't worked. It's failed. It's been an abysmal failure. My approach is good infrastructure to get product to marketplace, cutting red tape, affordable energy rates, and fixing our education system. We do that, we get our fundamentals right, we can make Ontario prosperous but again. right now, the Liberals are, are, are slash and burn. I mean, they're talking about uh, the LCBO, they're talking about selling portions of the OLG. All those are annuities that keep our health care costs low, that keep our roads paved. And how, how are we going to be able to, to, to protect those annuities for future Ontarians instead of saying, well, you know, they're, they're in the ditch here by $308 billion, so we best slash and burn to make it look better? You know, right now, Kathleen Wynne, to give a real estate analogy, is selling the house to pay for the new driveway. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it, it's, it's foolish. Um, she's selling revenue-producing assets that the province needs the province has historically worked well with so the question begs it, it's it, it's always an interesting perspective for us to be uh, you know couch potatoes and look and say well what would you do what would you have to sell to try and come back on this 308 billion well i'm not going to sell our, our revenue assets it, it's the it's the overspending it, it, it is the foolish waste you know you say you have to sell hydro one hydro one hydro one produces 700 million dollars in revenue mm -hmm. after two years it's a loss. I'm not going to sell our revenue assets, our revenue producing assets. What I wouldn't have done, they just wasted $2 billion on the smart meters, a billion dollars on the gas plants, a billion dollars on e-health. The new lawsuit with Trillium is another $500 million that taxpayers are exposed to. If you end the scandals, if you end the mismanagement, if you end the incompetence, if you create conditions where you create jobs, don't lose jobs, our balance sheet's going to be a lot better. What about what about spending? Just about two minutes left. Is there one thing uh, that you look at that the progressive conservatives would attack right at the beginning? Is there one element that would already make a difference to us if you were in power? Well, um, 
The heavy emphasis on administration rather than patience is something I would change immediately, but I'd also say the surplus energy because we were giving away, we gave away in the last two years, three and a half billion dollars right. in energy. Um, so we have to deal with the surplus energy. We have to deal with the administration at the expense of patients. Those are two quick things that we would immediately have to deal with. And, and when, you, when you look at uh, infrastructure, when you look at red tape, how many businesses have come to you with just about a minute left and uh, appealed that the government government has too much red tape. They can't do business because of regulation. The government moves at the pace of a snail. And I hear examples all the time where approvals take three years, four years, five years, nine years. And people tell me it's so much better in other provinces, other states. We can't be worse than the competition. We have to be better. Government can't move at the pace of a snail. We have to be agile with that. We have to be as fast and efficient as the private sector is. And with you being in a minority government right now, it's, it's very difficult um, to be able to, to challenge these things. Uh, I, a majority uh, government, yeah. Ma there's a majority, but you're, you're, you're the minority in, in a majority government. When we come back, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what your plan is going forward in the future. We're talking to Patrick Bowne. My name is Michael A. Charbon. You're watching Brad to Focus. Back with more right after this. Welcome back to Brampton Focus. I'll read you another quote here. Uh, the rules of our democracy are not set by one political party. We assume that Kathleen Wynne wants the process to have legitimacy. And there is going to be a cloud over this process if the Premier doesn't do the right thing. A quote from uh, my guest with us, Mr. Patrick Brown, the leader of the Progressive Conservatives. Um, Mr. Brown, we look at a... Um, federal liberal government, we look at a provincial liberal government, we look at here in Brampton, a former liberal uh, in power, uh, Linda Jeffrey, uh, we see this alignment, everything should be tickety-boo, we should be very, very happy with the way things are going. What would you do if uh, you uh, gained the reins of our provincial government? H how would you make Brampton an important part of how Ontario grows? Well, obviously, there's an unpopularity with the current uh, Kathleen Wynne uh, government, and uh, we're, we're likely going to see a significant change, and Brampton should be part of that. Brampton should be at the heart of that. Uh, frankly, you know, there's been Brampton MPPs elected here with Kathleen Wynne and Dalton McGuinty for longer than a decade. Sadly, we haven't seen the investments. Uh, the, lately, we've seen the hospitals cut Physicians protesting the government here in Brampton, nursing cuts here in Brampton, the infrastructure request ignored. And so despite electing liberal uh, MPPs, they seem to have no voice, no say down at Queen's Park. Further, you know, the commitment the Brampton MPPs made on the Sikh motorcycle exemption, uh, which was very a big issue in Peel, a big issue in Brampton, um, the government backtracked on it. So it seems every issue they made, every pledge they made to Brampton in the last campaign, they have run away from. Brampton deserves the respect uh, at Queen's Park. And uh, as, as someone who um, has worked in Brampton, who spends a lot of time in Brampton, I'm going to make sure that happens. So what do you say to Brampton Councillor Singh with regards to infrastructure spending? Well, we need infrastructure. There, there is, if you look at the gridlock, right now Kathleen Wynne's saying that uh, there isn't gridlock and that they've made infrastructure investments. Go and drive. You go and drive and, and, and any hour of the day you're finding traffic. And so the, the fact that Kathleen Wynne is not increasing the infrastructure budget, didn't use the Hydro One money for infrastructure, used it for one time uh, money in her budget, um, is disappointing. So would a, would a Patrick Brown uh, government invest in transit and infrastructure in Brampton? Would, would we see tangible results within the, the rain? Absolutely. Uh, I'm a big believer in infrastructure to get product to marketplace for quality of life. I would invest in Brampton infrastructure as a component of economic development, as a component of protecting quality of life. And I'm not going to do what Kathleen Wynne does. Kathleen right now is saying she's going to honor her infrastructure commitments over 12 years. 12 years! Mandates are, are, four, are yes. four years. She's got two years left and she's saying she'll, she'll keep her promises in 12 years? That's rubbish. The promises I make on infrastructure, I'm gonna 
keep in a four-year term within the mandate of my government. I'm sick and tired of politicians promising things 10 years and 20 years out when they're not going to be that, around. That's a bold statement. I mean, uh, that's the kind of stuff that people want to hear. That's a bold statement saying that your infrastructure uh, commitments will be within your four-year mandate. Well, how else can you measure them? Well, I'm just saying yeah. that you're not a politician no, when no. you're talking like that. You have you're to talking like a business yeah. guy. I mean, that's a little change. Well, you have to be accountable. The promises you make, you have to be accountable. People have to be able to judge you on them. Well, you've been touring the province. Uh, you've been meeting doctors and nurses. We've been uh, seeing so many cuts. One in particular, which is close to our hearts in Brampton, is uh, autism. Yeah. Um, we've seen demonstrations at Queen's Park. Well, what's your take on that? What, what would you do? You know, I can't believe the cuts to autism. Kathleen Wynne and the Brampton MPPs supported a decision to take 3,000 kids off the IBI list. Now, IBI is critical therapy. And they said anyone over five doesn't need it. Autism doesn't end at five. These 3,000 kids, their families came to Queen's Park to protest. Mm -hmm. but they said it's life altering, the ability to speak, communicate, um, to interact. Well, look at the autism spectrum is so wide and we're taking money away. What would a conservative government do to help that? Well, and I'm gonna be crystal clear because there's no gray in this. I will fund IBI after five. Autism doesn't end at five. I will support IBI therapy after the age of five. And if Kathleen Wynne doesn't do the right thing, then we're gonna do it in two years. So uh, with just about two minutes left, I wanna give you an opportunity to give our folks in Brampton a bit of a perspective of where you're going to take uh, the Progressive Conservative Party in Ontario and to give them an idea of some of the things you're gonna accomplish. And I love the four-year mandate in infrastructure. I think that's huge. Well, let me close by saying this. Um, Bill Davis was so successful for Ontario because he understood small business was at the heart of Ontario's success. He understood that you can't put partisan blinders on. You have to work with everyone, whether it's organized labor, whether it's other political parties. It's all about what's in the best interest of Ontario. The approach that I'm going to take is pragmatic. I'll work with anyone who wants to better and strengthen Ontario. There is no monopoly in a good idea. And if a good idea comes from another party, comes from a, a, a different group or stakeholder, we'll welcome those ideas. We need a conciliatory team approach, a thoughtful approach, a pragmatic approach at Queen's Park, and that's what I'll be advocating. Now, you've been new on the scene, if one would say. There are some people that say Patrick Brown. I mean, when, when you ask people, who's the leader of this, who's the leader? Uh, you just spoke to your convention, 1,600 people. Uh, it was the first time as the leader of the Progressive Conservatives. What are some of the messages you're getting back, and what are some of the tactics that you're going to use to introduce yourself to those who may have not been as politically savvy, you know, who Patrick Brown is, with about a minute left? Well, you know, I'm just going to get out and it's work hard. It's not an offense. Yeah. I'm, not, yeah. I'm not saying you're not known, no. <laughs> but there are some who don't. Well, right? ge generally, it takes time as an opposition leader to get to know everyone uh, and I think I, I did come out of uh, uh, relative obscurity my first the first poll in our leadership campaign for a party had me at 1% and the margin of error was 3% but in the end we were in the 60% range and we won that leadership and I and I I'd say I'd say this I'm gonna work hard I'm gonna put my head down and just work hard and listen relentlessly to Ontarians I look forward to the opportunity to get to know more families across this incredible province Patrick Brown official leader of the opposition and the, the leader of the Progressive Conservatives. Thank you so much for taking your time to come and visit us at Brampton Focus. We wish you well, and we hope that you'll come back and join us. Absolutely. And, uh, please, uh, we encourage you to visit our Facebook page and visit BramptonFocus.ca. Give us any questions or comments that you have and follow us on Twitter. My name is Michael A. Charbon. On behalf of all of us here at Brampton Focus, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you again soon.